What's up, Interweb? Raikwin here, and welcome to week number two of the PPL. I am really, really nervous about this match. Oh my god. Uh, this week, we're facing uh, Shroom Raver uh, of the Parasect Domain. And I'm terrified of this match. He also won in week one. Uh, it was probably the match of the week from week one was between... Uh, between Onesie Binet and Shroom Raver, so I am really, really nervous about this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go on with the team breakdown, but as always, if you don't want to hear me ramble about my team, I'm going to try and keep it shorter this week, by the way, because it was like 17, 18 minutes last week. I'm going to really try and keep it under 10 minutes if possible. But if you don't want to watch the team analysis, you can click the annotation on the screen right now to go ahead and skip to the battle itself. Uh, I'm not sure whether this will be live, come or not. You guys will see. Maybe. Uh, but, um, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and get on with the team breakdown. Now, first things first, let's take a look at the Parasite Domain. Oh god, his team. He has Mega Gallade, which is the Mega I wanted, initially. He drafted before me, so he got Mega Gallade. Um, I love Mega Gallade, probably my favourite Mega. Uh, it's so powerful and an absolute beast. He has Gyarados, which is no fun, with the Intimidate. He has Zapdos, who I love using. He has Registeel, which is ridiculously bulky. He has Uxie, which is disgusting. Disgustingly bulky. He has Whimsicott, which is amazing with the pranks. He has Houndoom, really quick, really uh, powerful special attacker. He has Dusclops, is stupidly bulky. He has Meloetta, which is very powerful and possibly with Relics on can turn it physical as well. And uh, he has Bisharp, which is obviously a huge threat because it's Bisharp. You see that guy everywhere in OU. And he has Pyloswine, which is again disgustingly bulky. Now, how am I going to deal with this? Hmm. Let's get him onto my team. So, um, the first poke I'm bringing is Fire Monkey, the Infernape. I'm bringing a Life Orb Infernape with Stone Edge, Fire Punch, Mac Punch, and Thunder Punch with Iron Fist as his ability with Max Attack, Max Speed, Jolly. Uh, now, Infernape here outspeeds a hell of a lot of his team. Uh, Max Speed Jolly is guaranteed to outspeed pretty much everything apart from Mega Gallade. Whimsicott and any Scarfers that he has. Um, those are the only things that outspeed. Actually, I need to check, double check Meloetta's base speed, but I'm pretty sure he outspeeds it. Um, I might have to check that, but anyway, I'm not really going to be staying on a Meloetta anyway. Um, but, um, yeah, that is Fire Monkey the Infernape. Uh, he's just there. Stone Edge is for Zapdos. Uh, Fire Punch is that plus it hits like Rage Steel and Whimsicott and things like that. Probably not going to be staying in on Whimsicott anyway, but. Um, yeah, Stone Edge for things like Zapdos, uh, Fire Punch for Registeel, and, um, yeah, Whimsicott, as I said. Uh, Mac Punch is there for Bisharp and Houndoom, uh, and Thunder Punch is there for Gyarados, mainly. Um, uh, even after an Intimidate, Thunder Punch still kills Gyarados, um, unless it has HP or Defense Investment. If it doesn't have HP or Defense Investment, Thunder Punch still kills after Intimidate, which is very nice to know. Um, so... He's just there to basically put some dents in the team. Pretty much just there, just to, you know, punch a few holes and then just get out, pretty much. That is pretty much Fire Monkey's job for this match. So that's Fire Monkey. The next Pokemon bring in, making the debut, is Horcrux of Spiritomb. And uh, this is a really, 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 really weird set. And one that I really hope will work, but probably won't. Who knows? We'll have to see. Um, I'm. Giving this Spiritomb the Key Berry with Infiltrator at ability with Will O Wisp, Shadow Ball, Hidden Power, Poison, and Pain Split. Uh, max HP, max defense, bold. Um, now, this guy is here for Mega Gallade. As I said, my Inferno doesn't outspeed Mega Gallade, so I need something that does. Now, I could have brought a Scarfer of some kind, but nothing that I really wanted to Scarf could do that much to Mega Gallade. I mean, that thing's like. Pretty damn bulky on the special side, so I couldn't have brought, like, I don't know, Galva Scarf Galvanta or something like that. Because I wouldn't have killed it with a Thunder. Um, that's the problem with doing a Scarfer is that it probably doesn't hit hard enough, so... There you go. Anyway, I brought Spiritomb. Horcrux of Spiritomb, because it is immune to both of Mega Gallade's stabs, Psychic and Fighting. And uh, it really can't do that much to it if I'm physically defensive. It really can't do that much to Spiritomb. I can burn it. Shadow Ball does uh, a clean, I think, 60%, something like that, um, to Omega Gallade. Uh, I'm running Hidden Power Poison, because if I do switch in Spiritomb on the Mega Gallade, I fully expect him to switch into Whimsicott. 
because uh, I can't do too much to it. Plus, he uh, is the only fairy on his team, and it can get like Moonblast, which would be which is going to hurt Spiritomb quite a lot. So I fully expect him to switch into Whimsicott, and uh, if he does, Hidden Power Poison on the switch. It's going to do I think about 70 to 80 percent. Um, combine that with maybe a little bit of damage here and there, and Whimsicott is dead, and it's going to be awesome. Also have Pain Split for a bit of recovery. The reason why I gave it the Keyberry is because uh, it allows me to actually switch into Mega Gallade properly. Um, even if he has a, I think a Sword Dance, I may be wrong with this. I think if he if he has Sword Dance and sets one up uh, on the switch into, if I switch in Spiritomb as he goes for a Sword Dance, uh, I think a knockoff does about 70%, something like that, maybe. But then on that turn, I can burn him. Uh, or just fire off a Shadow Ball, depending on what I'm feeling, depending on what his HP is. And um, uh, the combination of the Keyberry uh, increasing my defense and the burn on him means another knockoff or whatever move he goes for after that won't kill me. Um, plus, I could Pain Split up if I want to. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that is what Spirit Tomb is there for. It's there for Mega Gale, pretty much. Uh, plus, I can burn things. Uh, yeah, pretty much it. That is what Spirit Tomb is there for. So that's Horcrux Spirit Tomb. Next, also making their debut this week, is Finley the Vaporeon. With the leftovers with Water Absorb, with Acid Armor, Scold, Wish, and Heal Bell. Max HP, Max Special Defense, Calm Nature. And uh, this guy is a switch in to a lot of things. A lot of things on his team. He's there to soak hits, stay healthy. Uh, there are a few pokes I could set up an Acid Armor on, because he could switch into something like, I don't know, Gyarados? Probably not Gyarados, actually. Basically, physical attackers are more likely to attack Vaporeon, because it has insane special defense. Um, and if I can get up an Acid Armor, they're going to be doing absolutely nothing. I can uh, wish, stall them out, I can scold them, get burns on physical attackers, I can heal Bill in case they want to wear me down. Uh, that's pretty much it. The only other move that I really wanted on this Vaporeon was Toxic, but I don't have room for it. Uh, I originally had it on there, but then I realized I didn't have um, I didn't have Wish, and I needed it. I needed Wish to keep Vaporeon healthy, because it is crucial that Vaporeon stays healthy, because it's a switch in to a hell of a lot of his team. Um, so, yeah, that is Finley the Vaporeon, there to soak up special hits. Next, I'm bringing... Another Pokemon is making their debut, Mr. Krabs the Kingler, who was going to make his debut last week, but he switched out last minute. Emergency substitute at the end. Um, Mr. Krabs the Kingler. Now, I'm bringing a Lumberry on this guy with Hypercutter as its ability, with Knockoff, Swords Dance, Crab Hammer, and Brick Break. Um, with Max Attack, Max Speed, Adamant. Now, I'm bringing Lumberry because if uh, Shroom Rover decides to bring Dusclops, uh, I can come in, I can set up a sword stance, he'd be tempted to burn me, because that's what Dusclopses do, and a burn on a Kingler is highly detrimental. So I can go for a sword stance, he can go for the Will-O-Wisp, and my Lumberry will heal my burn, and then I can just fire off a knockoff, which does 90%? I think it has a chance to outgo. Okay. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. I think has a chance to work though. Um, plus two knockoff on the Dusk Lobs. And if he wants to switch out, to something to take it. I can fire off like a Crab Hammer, which is ridiculous at plus two. Uh, I can fire off a Brick Break if he has screens up, because he could potentially be bringing new Super Screens. Um, Mr. Krabs is there for Dusk Lobs, pretty much. If Dusk Lobs, I don't know, take something out. If I can get a clean switch for Kingler to go into Dusk Lobs, then I can proceed to set up a Sword Stance and try and uh, fire off knockoffs on things. And the reason I have speed investment and not HP investment is because with the speed investment, I outspeed Yuxi, I believe. Um, if he doesn't have speed investment, I outspeed Yuxi. Uh, if he doesn't have speed investment on Meloetta, I think I outspeed that too and fire off a knockoff. Unlikely he's not going to be having speed investment on Meloetta, but you never know. He might be running like a special defensive or physically defensive one. Um, but I can fire off a plus two knockoff, which is going to do a serious amount of damage. If he doesn't have defense investment, that's uh, that's an okay, I'm pretty sure. Um, but anyway, that is Mr. Krabs the Kingler. The fifth Pokemon I'm bringing this week is Rhyperia the Rhyperia. This is a weird set. I'm bringing Assault Vest, Rhyperia. With Solid Rock, with Dragon Tail, Mega Horn, Earthquake, and Rock Slide. 
Max HP, max special defense, careful. This guy is here to be a switch in for Zapdos. That's his only role, to be a switch in for Zapdos. Because uh, Zapdos is a damn problem for my team. Uh, Infernip is frail. Spiritomb is physically defensive. Vaporeon is weak to Thunderbolt, even though it's especially defensive. I think Thunderbolt does about 30%, which isn't like too much, but I do not want to be getting into games playing around with a Zapdos out of Vaporeon, because as I said, it's really important that Vaporeon stays healthy, so I don't want to be messing around with Zapdos too much. Uh, obviously, King Luke gets absolutely destroyed by Zapdos, and uh, so I needed a, a switch in. I needed something that was immune uh, to Electric, which was either Excadrill or Rhyperia, and Excadrill is weak to Heat Wave from Zapdos, so I didn't want to be doing that. So I decided to bring Rhyperia, and uh, the only real um, move that he could use against me is something like Hidden Power Water or Hidden Power Grass, um, and that would be really annoying if he does bring that, and that's the only reason I had to bring Assault Vest. Before, I was just going to bring uh, Max Special Defense with uh, Leftovers, with uh, like Stealth Rock and Raw, which would have been really, really helpful, but like a Hidden Power Water on a Max Special Defensive Rhyperia still did like 60%, uh, which just is not good for a switch in, so uh, I had to bring Assault Vest, and now it does about 30%, I think, 30-40%, something like that. Um, and I can scare it out with a Rock Slide, because Rock Slide, I think, is close to an Oko. Um, I have Dragon Tail for phasing, which isn't going to be too important, because I don't have rocks. Uh, could do the EQ, um, is just stab Mega Horn for things like Uxie, which want to switch in. It's not going to be doing that much damage, because Uxie is stupidly bulky, but whatever. Uh, that is Rhyphira the Rhyperia, and next I am bringing, the last poke I'm bringing, is my Mega Altaria. Altaria, the Mega Altaria. With obviously the Altaria Knight, with Natural Cure before it Mega Evolves and then picks late when it does. And I am bringing Dragon Dance there. Dragon Dance, Return, Earthquake, and Roost. Max Attack, Max Speed, Adamant. And now, uh, this Altaria, um, I didn't think about bringing Mega Altaria. I was really considering not bringing it. Um, because he has a Buy Sharp, which is no fun for Mega Altaria. Um, Scarf Buy Sharp absolutely wrecks Mega Altaria, and I fully expect him to bring that. Um, but. I didn't think about bringing it initially because I don't like to think of the Dragon Dance set because it's one of the more common things you find on Mega Terry and I like to be different, so I didn't really think about it that much. Um, but um, I thought of it at the end. I was like, "Hold on a second, my camera stopped recording." <sighs> Always does it. I wanted I wanted to try and do the team analysis before it stopped recording because it's consistently around 11, 12 minutes. But we didn't. Oh well. Um, I thought of Dragon Dance Mega Altaria, and I looked at his team and I was like, hold the phone. That can absolutely sweep him if I get up one Dragon Dance. That can absolutely sweep him. I'll outspeed Mega Gallade, and I can pop it with a return. I can outspeed Gyarados and pop that thing with a return, even after... Wait, after an Intimidate, I think I do about 80% with a return. Uh, that's it. If I get off a Dragon Dance and then he Intimidates me so I'm back to normal, um, then it does about 80%, and then Ice Fang does like... 50% I want to say, so I can I can 1v1 the Gyarados, uh, I Oko Zapdos at plus 1, uh, Registeel I think is a 2 hit KO with an Earthquake and Iron Head does about 40%, 50% something like that depending on his investment, uh, Uxie is a bit of a problem that can wall me because a plus 2 return still doesn't Oko Uxie because it's stupidly bulky, it's a bit of a problem but uh, then there's Whimsicott who can be a problem, because if he switches in Whimsicott on my Dragon Dance, he can encore me into it, and that's a bit of a problem. Um, but, we'll deal with that. But Return does absolutely destroy that guy if he does decide to uh, stay in. And I do outspeed it, I'm pretty sure, at plus one. Yeah, I do. I, outsp I outspeed it at plus one, which is nice. Houndoom gets wrecked by uh, Return. Dusclops, again, can warm me, kind of, and it can burn me, which is a bit of a problem, which is why I have Kingler to try and, um, you know, deal with that guy a little bit. Uh, I outspeed Meloetta and can pop it with a return. Buy Sharp does not appreciate return or Earthquake. And Pillar Swine is ridiculously bulky. <laughs> um, that's another bit of a problem. I need to knock off that guy as well. Uh, because return does, I think, about half a plus one. And Avalanche from that guy kills me. Um, so, that's going to be no fun. Um, but... Mega Terror, if I can get up one Dragon Dance and take out some of the uh, the things that stop it, then I should be good. I... 
that that's my team, but I'm not overly confident with this one. I really, really struggled with the team building on this one. I had a solid idea, and then uh, I was speaking to a few people. They pointed out some flaws, and I was like, oh, God, I have nothing again. I had to start from scratch. Came up with a new idea, found some holes in that, and I was like, oh, God damn it. I don't want to start again, so I'm basically just going with it. I'm just going to try it and see what happens. Uh, I do. I really want to win this one, but I really don't know if I'm going to. Um, we'll have to see. But um, he, I think he can. He can potentially have things that absolutely destroy me, such as Sword Dance Mega Gallade can absolutely wreck me. If he gets off one Sword Dance, I have uh, the only priority I have on my team is Mac Punch in the form of Infernape, and that's resisted. So if he can, he can Shadow Sneak everyone pretty much and uh, wreck their lives. That is the gist of it. Um, Rhyperia, though, by the way, even though he's uh, max special defense, if the Mega Gallade is an Sword Dance, or if it doesn't have a Sword Dance stuff, if he goes for a close combat, Rhyperia can actually live one. Woo! Um, which is pretty crazy, even though there's no defense investment. Can still live a close combat, and I can proceed to do nothing to it in return. I can Earthquake it, I guess. It's not going to do that much. But um, anyway, that's my team. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get right on with the match, which will be sometime soon. I don't know when we're battling this week, but we will uh, see you in a few seconds. Thank you for watching this team analysis, and uh, I'll see you guys with the battle. All right, so here we go with the match against Troom Raver and the Parasect Domain. Uh, now, my team is exactly the same from the team preview. Didn't change anything this time. And uh, we can see from the opposite side, we can see Shroom Raver's team. He's bringing Mega Gallade, Whimsicott, Reggie Steel, Zapdos, Uxie, and Gyarados. Now, uh, I decide to lead with uh, Infernape in this one. And uh, he is actually going to lead with his Gyarados. Um, that was a good lead on his part, I guess. Um, we are going to get right on with the match. Now, at this point, I saw that he wasn't bringing uh, any of the threats that I'd planned for, like Dusclop, so Kingler isn't going to do the thing I wanted to against Dusclops. He's not bringing Piloswine, he's not bringing Houndoom, any of those guys. So, um, I saw that he's bringing Mega Gallade, so I wanted to use Spiritomb the way I wanted to use it. Uh, I saw that uh, I did have an opportunity to sweep with Mega Altaria. I just needed to, to take out uh, Registeel and the Uxie, and preferably Gyarados' Intimidate as well. Uh, or at least get a significant amount of damage on them, and then uh, get one or possibly two Dragon Dances up on Mega Altaria, and I could sweep him. So that was my plan. Let's see if it actually worked. Let's get right on to the match. So here we go. That is loud. I need to turn you down because I'm not going to be able to hear my own voice if I don't do that. So Dave's issue in the challenge, Shroom River. As I said, he is going to lead with District 9, which is his Gyarados. I'm going to lead with my Infernape Fire Monkey, and I do actually have nicknames this week, which is good. And uh, he is going to intimidate me, and I could have gone for the Thunder Punch here, but I did not want to risk it because I knew I could potentially kill him, but if he had HP or Defense Investment, it wouldn't have killed, and I didn't want to be losing my Inferno that early. So I make the safe switch into Vaporeon, as he reveals the Thunder Wave, so I was very happy I switched, because if he had lived the Thunder Punch, then uh, I did not want my Inferno getting paralyzed, because that would have been not very fun at all. Uh, he's going to switch out his uh, Gyarados at this point, uh, not wanting to potentially take a Scold or whatever. He's going to switch out into his Zapdos, which is a very safe switch. Zapdos does very well against Vaporeon. So I'm going to go for a Wish, just trying to basically scalp, see what he wanted to do. And if he wanted to get some damage on me with Crunch or whatever, then I could uh, Wish the, um, the damage off. Now, he's going to make a very good double going into his Whimsicott as I switched out into my Rhyperia, making a very, very good double on his part. Um, and Whimsicott's actually, it was pretty risk-free double as well because Whimsicott matching up against Vaporeon is still good for him anyway. Uh, and obviously, my Rhyperia does not want to be staying in against the Whimsicott, so I'm going to switch out into Infernip. And I realized at this point, I really didn't have any or many switch-ins into Whimsicott. Um, my special wall was weak to its Giga Drain, and uh, he just kind of wrecked you know, my team. And I see that he's Life Orb as well. He's an offensive Whimsicott, so he's going to be doing more damage than I'd anticipated. Even though he's only base 77 special attack, still can put in work. He's going to switch out into his Gyarados, but I predict that. I go for the Thunder Punch, predicting the Gyarados to come in. Let's see how much this does after an Intimidate. It's this close to taking out the Gyarados. Just not enough, and I'm going to take some more Life Orb recoil. I see he has leftovers. He's not going to outspeed with any Scarf shenanigans or whatever. So uh, I'm just going to pretty safely go for another Thunder Punch and hope he stays in. And he does. He stays in, and his Gyarados goes down. I was very happy to take out one of the uh, one of the things that was stopping Mega Altaria sweeping very early. So 
able to take down the Gyarados, which is very nice indeed. I was very happy with that prediction on the Thunder Punch. Now he's going to, going to bring Bracket. English words, things. He's going to bring back out Fro Show, his Whimsicott. And I don't want to be standing around because I'm pretty sure at that range of HP, a, uh, a Moonblast will kill me. And he will outspeed me if he's max speed timid, so I didn't want to be messing around with that. Switch into Vaporeon to take this Moonblast, and he gets a crit. Uh, and a special attack drop, which is just a rub sort the wound. Doesn't really matter too much, but um, he's going to take some more life or break oil. I'm going to get some lefties, and uh, I'm pretty certain at this point I just go for a wish as he goes for... No, he switches out. Switches out his Whimsicott as he goes into... Pink Floyd, his Uxie. Now, I go for a wish. Hoping he was going to go for maybe a Giga Drain and I could wish all the damage off. This is where things go downhill. Um, I don't really know what I was thinking at this point. Um, his Uxie is going to set up a Carmine. Which I did see coming. Um, but in the back of my mind I was thinking, I had Kingla. It's fine, I have Kingla. With Swords Dance knockoff. It's fine, I have Kingla. I'm going to go for a Heal Bell to try and get rid of the Paralysis on Vaporeon because I didn't want to be getting Power Hacks. That's the last thing I wanted on Vaporeon. Like, miss it. not getting up a Crucial Wish or whatever would be really annoying. So I wanted to get rid of the Paralysis. Now I predict him to go for another Calm Wind and I'm going to switch out into Kingla. Uh, and it was at this point, after he does go for another Calm Wind, that I realized, I was like, wait, I can't get up a Sword Stance because he's going to kill me with whatever move he goes for because Kingla's Special Defense is absolutely horrendous. He's going to kill me, so I have to go for a knockoff straight away. I'm going to go for the knockoff. And he reveals he's a Culberberry. Culberberry Uxie, which means his knockoff's going to do absolutely nothing. And then he reveals he has the Giga Drain, which is definitely going to take out a Kingler and a plus two. And he's going to get all his HP back that he just lost from the knockoff. So I thought at this point, I was like, oh, I've lost. Because there is nothing I can do to this Uxie. I don't have Toxic on my Vaporeon. I put on Scold instead. Uh, as he's going to go for a Psychic here. Maybe predicting the double into Inferno. But it's still going to do a decent amount of damage. I go for the Scold here. Hoping for the Scold Burn. Which I do not get. Uh, and it was kind of a bad play on my part. I should have gone for the Wish that turn. Uh, to try and get HP off the next turn. He's going to now go for the Giga Drain, which means he's just going to get all the HP back that he just lost from the Scald, which obviously isn't very much. Um, but he's going to get all the HP back that he just lost, and uh, I'm not going to be able to live another Giga Drain with his Vaporeon. Uh, but I predict him here to uh, predict the Protect, to expect the Protect, and go for another Calm Mind. So I took this opportunity to go for a Scald, hoping for another Burn again, because chip damage is always nice. He does go for another Calm Mind, expecting the Protect, I'm assuming. Uh, as uh, I am going to take this opportunity to get off another Scold. Really, really hope I can get the burn because chip damage is always going to be really handy against something like this. I do go for the Scold to see if it burns this time. Yes, I do. Get the burn. Very nice indeed. And uh, that Uxie is going to be taking a bit of chip damage. But the annoying thing with that is it's not. Uh, it doesn't build like Toxic, which means he can just Giga Drain off all the, the damage and there's nothing I can do. He's a plus two right now. He's a plus three right now. Which is annoying, he's going to go for a Giga Drain, I'm going to go for a Wish again, but there's no way I can live two, uh, two Giga Drains right now. Um, uh, I just went for the Wish just in case he wanted to, for some reason, go for another Combine or something, I don't know. Don't know what I was expecting there, I just wanted to kind of go for it, I don't really know. Um, but, yeah, there's no way he's not going to go for a Giga Drain right now, because I didn't go for Protect the last time, he's not going to expect me to go for Protect this time, so... He's just going to go for the Giga Drain, and Vaporeon's going to go down. Finley is unfortunately going to die in his debut match without really doing too much. It really sucks, but let's see what happens here. And I thought at this point, uh, Uxie sweeps, and then I realized something. I was like, hold on. My rep here is Max Special Defense Assault Vest. I ran a calc. I can live a Giga Drain from a plus three Uxie. Let's eat this up. I can fire off a Dragon Tail. I can fire off a Dragon Tail. Get this Uxie out of it. It's going to lose all of his Calm Minds. And it's just going to buy me some really valuable time. So let's fire off this Dragon Tail. And he misses. Rhyperia let me down. And he misses the Dragon Tail. And at this point, I said, well, I've lost. There's, there's absolutely nothing I can do to this Uxie now. Rhyperia is going to go down to a Psychic. There is absolutely nothing I can do to Uxie now. I have nothing to take him down. Uh, he's just going to sweep my entire team. I bring in Infernape to try and do as much damage as possible, but there's nothing I can do. I'm going to go for a Fire Punch and see how much this does. And that actually ends up doing a whole lot. Oh my god, that's a crit! Oh my god, it's a crit! And that crit is pretty damn crucial because 
He's going to go for a Psychic right now and take out my Infernape, which really sucks, by the way. Um, but the good news is that he didn't go for Giga Drain. He couldn't go for Giga Drain on Infernape, because I don't think it would have killed him, even a plus three. The burn damage is going to rack up, and that means he's at range to die from pretty much anything at this point. I can come in with Mega Altaria, get my Mega, Leven off, Mega Evolution off, fire off a return, and that Uxie's going to go down, uh, which is really, really helpful, because... I don't think it would have affected the result too much. I'm pretty sure, whatever the result is, I don't think it would have affected too much. But it does help the score. So he's now going to bring in Registeel. Uh, now I realize Registeel can't do anything. Iron Head or a Flash Cannon only does about 40 to 50% temp, max. So I am going to go for a Dragon Dart. Set up on this guy. There's nothing he can do. I can, I can set up and I can sweep this guy. And he reveals the Thunder Wave. And I was like, ah, Christ almighty. And then I realized I probably lost, but I was like, hold on, if I don't get Power Hacks, I can still win this. Let's go for another Dragon Dance, because Rage still can't do anything to me. Let's go for another Dragon Dance. If I'm a plus two, I'm at neutral. Let's go for this Dragon Dance, and let's get this up again. So I go for a second Dragon Dance, I'm a plus two, and uh, I'm a plus two speed, plus two attack. And I can fire off a return, and then I was like, wait, I'm at neutral. Wind's got out speed. I ran a count. Boom Blast kills. Nothing I can do, and is going to go down to the Boom Blast. My last Pokemon is Whimsicott, is Whimsicott, is Spiritomb, who is not going to appreciate a Moonblast. Obviously, it's weak to it, and uh, there's nothing I can do at this point. It's my last Pokemon. Horcrux was in reserve for Mega Gallade, who hasn't even come on the field. And there's nothing I can do, he's just going to go for a Moonblast. And uh, Spiritomb actually lives on 6 HP, and I'm going to fire off an HP Poison, but he gets a special attack drop, which means this HP Poison isn't going to take out this Whimsicott, which is so frustrating. It was just like... Come on, really? Couldn't even give me that one kill at the end. So, uh, unfortunately, he's going to make the very, very safe prediction, the, the safe play, and the correct play to make in the, uh, in the, the safest differential. He is going to switch out into that first because I could have had Shadow Sneak or Sucker Punch, neither of which I actually have on this spirit team, but could have done it. Uh, so he's going to save his differential guard into Zapdos. Zapdos is going to pick up the kill on Spirit Tomb. And that's extremely unfortunate, but he saved his differential. He did what he had to do. And uh, that is going to be a 4 0 victory for Shroom Raven and the Parasite Jermaine. So, week one, we got a 5 0. Week two, we lose 4 0. That's just the way things go, unfortunately. I completely underestimated the power of Carmine Dukesy. Good game. Shroom Raven, very, very well played. And uh, I, I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to underestimate threats ever again. And trust me, week three, we are coming back bigger and better and stronger than ever. Nottingham Forest Curse are going to come back for week three. And we're definitely going to take it week three. Links will be in the description for Shroom Raver. He does some great content. And he's a great friend of mine. So please make sure to go and check him out. And make sure to subscribe to the PPL channel as well. There'll be recap videos going up uh, on the PPL channel. So you can keep up to date with the league table and the MVP race and all kinds of interesting, fun stuff. So make sure to go do that too. And uh, join us next week for week three of the PPL when I'll be facing Tito's great friend of mine, TS, in the Sport Lisbon, Brahika. And uh, we'll see how that much goes. So I'll see you guys next week. Toodaloo.